So the parts for rebuilding the RD50 engine came in. So we got uh, one of each bearing. I've actually ordered a couple of them uh, double, just in case. We also got a uh, gasket set or a rubber ring set. So before we get started, what I'm actually going to do, uh, I'm going to put all these in the freezer and uh, come back in a day or two. Why? Because I see a lot of people slamming in bearings into their housing with the old bearings or with a hammer or whatever. But actually the best trick that I can give you is put these in the freezer for a couple of days so they get really cold and the metal actually shrinks. And then when you go mount them, heat up the case. And if you're lucky, the, the case expands enough and the bearing shrinks enough so you can actually just put them in by hand or with a, a light persuasion. And when everything cools down again, they should uh, press fit each other. So yeah, let's put these in the freezer and come back in a day or two. So we're back. The bearings have been in the freezer for two days. So they're definitely cold. So what we're going to do now, we're going to heat up the case and uh, hopefully the bearings have shrunk enough and the case will expand enough so that they fit easily. Come on. So let's see. Uh, where's my hammer? Definitely have to heat it more. Nice. I hope that's better. Where's the old one here? There we go. That was the result I wanted. No hammer needed. If you do end up having a bit like this, it went in the first half and then uh, it got stuck a bit, probably because I didn't heat it enough. Use the old bearing and hit the old bearing on the outer race. Because if you hit the inner race, you can actually destroy the balls in the bearing uh, because these are not made to get a lot of force in the actual direction. So yeah, that's uh, the first half done. I'm going to do the same with the second one and check back in a bit. So we got the new bearings in. The second half went in very smooth as well, just like this one. So I did need to heat up this part more. So next up is uh, the gaskets. Uh, I think this is it. I have two of these. Try not to hammer these in, if possible, if not, then be careful. And this side for the shift, uh, for the clutch push rod. There we go. Here, when you do have to give them a little persuasion, try to hit them on the outside as well. Because if you hit the inside and you tear the rubber, well then uh, it's back to square one. Uh, nope. So, it's for here. I just got back from a parts run for the RD50. These are the old parts. So we have the crank back, needle bearing, big end bearing, absolutely fine. That was not the issue. So we were thinking that the 
piston might have been too loose in the cylinder. Hopefully that was the case. This is the old piston. So I've managed to find a piston for a RD50M, the later model, which uh, the guy, he turned it, the hat down because this is a flat top and the M has a sphere shaped head. So turn them down. The only thing that I'm missing is the piston rings. These have been ordered but have not came in yet, but I went ahead and uh, grabbed all the other parts so I can start reassembly of the engine. I'm going to measure up these ports, but they actually seem to be exactly the same. So hopefully we won't have to do any port matching, but I'm going to measure them up and if need be, I'll uh, grind them out a bit. But at first sight, they seem exactly the same. Well, apart from the head that has been turned down. I don't have a lathe, so I didn't do it myself. I hope I'll have one one day. A brand new needle bearing, a small end for the top. So, because this one was damaged, the needle the needles were able to fall out. So we have a brand spanking new one. And now the biggest piece that uh, we've all been waiting for, oh, or at least I have been waiting for. We have the old cylinder has been cleaned. And so the chrome coating has been removed chemically. And then they've added a new nicosyl coating. And the cylinder has been honed to the right specification for this piston. So this thing should be perfect. So you can see, freshly coated and honed cylinder. The, the cylinder has been cleaned up as well. They did a much better job than I would be able to do. So we got the crankshaft, we got the two halves of the engine. I'm going to start by trying to put the crankshaft in on one side and then uh, fit the two halves together. I'm not sure if this will be a straight fit or if I'll have to heat it or not. Uh, it would definitely be better if I put it in the correct way. The side with the chamfered part is the ignition side. So flip it around. Yes, there we go. Okay, perfect. Let's put this here. So to seal up the two halves <clears throat> of the engine, I'm actually going to take the crankshaft out again and apply some seal first. Okay, I think that's it. I think I have everything. Pay some extra attention to the on underside of the engine because this is where all the oil sits, and especially in the crankcase here, so you don't have air leaks. So I'm going to set in the, the dowels. I'm going to try and heat the bearing slightly. in the crankshaft first. At least try to. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, nice. You see, a little bit of physics does wonders. is not in place there we go 
this uh, gear was on top of the other gear, so it wouldn't fit. So maybe uh -huh. the neutral switch, or at least the neutral lockout, might be hitting the, the top of the shifter here. Can I get this thing out? Damn it, of course it's hot. You just heat it with. Oh. oh, yes, that was it. Look at that. We're all sealed up now. Okay. We have a box of fresh nuts and bolts, or at least bolts. My tip is to get a bolt in each hole before you start torquing it down. Try to pull them down in stages and in a cross pattern. On an engine block that's not really easy to do in a complete perfect cross pattern, but something that gets close should work. I think I have them all. Now I'll just give them one last check with the long side of my wrench. These all seem good. First thing we need to do is mount this rubber ring into this uh, onto the crankshaft here. Notice that the inner diameter of the ring is actually too big. That's because there still needs to be a sleeve on this uh, axle. So I'm actually going to grease up the edges of the O-ring here. The O-ring, the rubber ring. So it slides in a bit easier. This one is pretty tough, if I remember correctly. going to use the old ring and a 30 millimeter socket that is actually exactly the, the diameter of the rubber gasket and gently hit it with a hammer. Yeah, that's not good. Let's see if there is anything to be saved here. Probably not. Okay. 
Uh, there's a slight gouge here. You can feel a little bit of a bump, or well, not a bump, maybe just a, a scratch. Ah, I didn't see this. I'm going to lightly hit it with a piece of 400 grit sandpaper. Nothing too crazy. Just to take a bit of the edges off. I think that should be way better. So what I generally do if I order parts for a rebuild, for example, rubber rings, I do order them two times. So I can, I can mess it up. I'd rather not mess it up, but okay, sometimes it happens. A bit of oil. Yeah, I can already tell this is way better. Okay, I think that's it. It's in. So for those of you that are installing new bearings, for the crankshaft to have some resistance in the beginning, that's totally normal because new bearings need to be, they have to be broken in. Yeah, as long as it turns smooth and doesn't uh, get stuck halfway or, or whatever, then everything should be fine. So this was the sleeve I was talking about. This thing goes in and then in into the gasket. But I'm going to give it a bit of a clean first. Boom, there we go. And then we have the key. It goes in. Just a little tap. And then the gear. Where is the slot? Boom. The washer is still on. And that's, that's it. Don't forget this sprung washer here. Whoop. And then the gear, the washer, and the C clip. I'm also going to give this a light sanding just to get the rough edges off so I don't scratch the new rubber rings on the way in, or on the way out at least. When it's clean. There we go. Gear shifter in place. Actual gear link. Come on, just a bit further. There we go. Don't forget this little bearing or this little wheel here. Put it in uh, just so that the tab on the back is in the Okay, let me show you. This tab right here has to slide in this space here. So you have to make sure it fits in that spot. And then you can rotate this spring ow, over the gear. Just to it. Ah, just to get it into position. Okay, I think that's it. Now the spring. Just like that. And now we should have... Hmm. 
a working Kickstarter. Yeah, the cases push this plastic piece down just so that the gear stays in position. Otherwise it can go up a bit. So we can actually test the function of the Kickstarter just to make sure it's correct. Just put it on and then We release the pressure. This should be pushed down so that the spring can't come up. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Next up, the clutch. Before we forget, the C clip. the shifter mechanism boom there we go we got the clutch housing cleaned it up a little bit and this thing ju should just slide over Maybe. yeah there we go spin the gears so that they mesh and then don't forget this all-important washer here we go then the, I don't know what it should be called, the inner plate that connects to the output shaft. And uh, the outer housing connects to the crankshaft. Don't lose this tiny ball for the clutch pin. I'm not going to mount it right now. I'm going to wait until I put the pin in from the other side. So I'm going to keep these in a box here. Go. I am going to fit this side because I can't fit it from the other side. The clutch plates and this rubber ring. I'm not sure why this ring is in here, but I'm just going to put them back. These clutch plates are exactly the same like the FS1, so they can be replaced if need be, but they actually look still perfectly fine. And they grip even with a light amount of pressure. Clean this thing up. Uh, yeah, still need to actually tie the clutch down. Don't forget this one, it's the most important one and uh, make sure it's still shaped as a cone because this actually tensions the nut so it doesn't shake loose. Actually I might put some blue Loctite on it as well just to make sure. Let's just put a tiny dab of Loctite on as well, nothing too crazy. And then just hit it with the deck deck. The pusher. Here as well, I'd like to use a cross pattern to tighten everything down. And there you have it. That's a rebuilt RD50 engine. The only thing that's left is to reinstall the ignition on the other side and the clutch cover on this side. So let's actually do that. So I'm going to do the same, just loosely tighten everything and then tighten everything in a cross pattern just to prevent warpage. Now would be the time to put in this tiny little thing. Just push it in. I'm actually going to give this rod a good clean and a bit of sandpaper as well to make it smooth again.
you can tell which side had the ball on because of uh, the markings that the ball makes when it spins there we go and now the last piece the clutch oh the clutch the ignition there that's that and now last but not least the actual flywheel where's the key On the bottom there we go Washer number one, washer number two, and the nut. There we go. Then just this neutral indicator, or the neutral switch for the light. There you have it, a freshly rebuilt small block of the RD50. So, there's just one last thing to do just for testing and that's to mount the piston and the cylinder and just to check if uh, the hat has been turned down eno enough or not the piston and the fresh cylinder is on and everything looks absolutely perfect so it's perfectly flat now i'm not sure if you're able to see this but uh, normally this piston has a bump so that it would get up higher that's why we had to turn it down but it's absolutely perfect i'm still waiting on my piston rings so that's it for now uh, if you've learned anything from this video make sure to like and subscribe because uh, there will definitely be more thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one